everyone is looking really good today although in my case there was a lot of effort that went into it not as effortless as everyone else looks all right good so uh, let me get started uh, good morning good afternoon good evening depending on which part of the globe you are welcome to our panel on horror and the global indian reader now our question today is with the international horror literature booming and branching out like the neurons of metaverse are we as indian readers of horror evolving at the same pace now we have an exciting lineup of writers of adult children and true tales of horror ahead to share their take on this modern dilemma i'm going to take a few minutes to introduce our esteemed panel before putting them on spotlight Our first panelist is someone who I consider as the Agatha Christie of Indian crime fiction, especially with her latest Colonel Acharya mystery. A self-confessed wordaholic, a traveler, when she is not reading or writing, she is sure to be packing her bags and boots and going zipping around the world. Tanushree Pother has stumbled through many career choices before finalizing on writing. with 16 books under her belt spooky stories is her collection for children's horror and if i may be so bold it aims to spook adults as well welcome tanushree thank you all right up next we have our second panelist and honestly he needs no introduction nevertheless with 12 books to his credit Neil De Silva is a known name in the Indian literary world. His unique stories have struck a chord with a wide range of readers, eliciting praise from various quarters. He's published with leading publishers such as Penguin, Rupa, Hatchet, among others, and he has also won screen adaptation deals on four of his books. He has been named as one of the seven Indian authors. Authors of horror to be read by UK's Desi Blitz magazine. Welcome, Neil. Thank you so much, L. And uh, you know, as always, it's a pleasure talking to you. And also, I'll take a moment here to say that uh, this is uh, Fright Venture, as you know it. We conceived Fright Venture last year. This is the second chapter of it, and this year we have gone bigger and bolder by collaborating with Scarecon. and uh, l uh, lakshmi if i may call you that you have always been a big support uh, to the horror writers associations india chapter uh, i just you are just a ping away whenever i need something for example this panel itself you as well as siddharth both of you uh, so thank you for being such a big support uh, and plus my vote of thanks will come later just give me a minute at the end to say that thank you so much definitely neil definitely thanks a lot All right, so I will move on. Our uh, third panelist, he is an ENT surgeon and an author, Siddharth Nirvan. He has written three books: The Last Witch Trial, Dead Never Die, which is based on rural legends of Rajasthan, that was also acquired by Audible. Dead People's Town, that happens to be India's first zombie horror book, and about time we started writing about zombies. He's an active member of Horror Writers Association. Like Neil said, he organized India's first online horror literature festival in September 2020, Bhutcon. He's a host of a chat show, Talking to Siddharth, that features noted and new Indian authors as well as avid vloggers. Welcome, Siddharth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right. Ah, uh, next up we have. you know i in fact this is again my second foray with her um the inimitable venita coelho she's a writer a director and an artist a brilliant artist at that she's a winner of the sahitya academy award the hindu goodreads award and many more she has made a mark for, for herself in children's literature besides film and television with the release of darkness this year coupled with washer of the dead and whisper in the wind she has been giving us chills thrills and dark vibes from the land of sun and sand goa since 2010 welcome venita oh thank you so much l i'm so excited to be on this panel i can't wait to get chatting with all these other wonderful writers it's going to be so much fun 
Awesome. Thank you, Vanita. All right. So our final panelist for today is K. Hari Kumar, a.k.a. Horror Kumar. He's an Indian screenwriter, a best-selling author of horror and psychological thriller novels. Born in Kochi and brought up in Gurgaon, Hari was the first Indian writer to be listed on Amazon's global bestsellers list in horror category. He has also written 50 horror short stories that were published in his 2019 book, India's Most Haunted, which the Times of India deemed as a must-read horror and also was listed by HarperCollins as 100 best books of all time written by Indian authors. His psychological thriller, The Other Side of Her, spawned the critically acclaimed Hindi language web series, Drum. His next book with HarperCollins is slated for release in December 2021. Now, I would say welcome Hari or Horror Kumar, but he informed me just before the session that uh, he might join a little later. Uh, Hari, are you there? I am here. I am oh, actually wonderful. connected via my mobile. So... I'll, I'll join you, I'll join with my video a little later. And thank you for having me here. And thanks to the entire team that is behind this, uh, behind Pride Venture and Scarecon. Sarabjit, uh, Pooja, Neil, you. So thank you for having me here. And yeah, I just moved Wonderful. into this new house in Pune. So my inter the internet connection guys here is actually installing the Wi-Fi. So yeah. I'll, I'll just make a short cameo to, uh, you know, introduce our moderator as well, because she'll be the one who will be driving this entire thing. So, yeah, our moderator, as uh, I, I was very fascinated when I heard her name, LP, but it was only Neil by later who informed me that her name is Lakshmi Priya. And I was glad that it is not just LP because I was a bit confused about it. But yeah, she is one of the founders of Hype Publishing. It is a boutique firm that aims to bring voices of writers to readers through anthologies. And uh, yeah, she is the one who will be uh, moderating this panel. This was my cameo. Continue with the panel. Have a great one. Thank you. Thank you, Sarvajit. Yes, uh, the secret behind my name, LP, is because the kind of fiction that I write, it's very difficult for people to associate with it with a Lakshmi Priya. So, you know, to make it easier for readers, I have turned it to LP. <laughs> right. So I think, uh, should we get started? Yes. Are, are you all? Yes. yes. Okay, great, great. So my first question is, uh, you know, with the international horror literature that is branching out to, you know, from Gothic, earlier we used to have Gothic by your Edgar Allan Poe's and everything, to now weird fiction. And in fact, even Lovecraftian horror has taken on its own cult status, right? I mean, there are so many... It's, it's no more fan fiction. Lovecraftian horror itself is a genre, right? And, and we have slasher and we have dystopian horror. So do you believe that the Indian reader of horror fiction is ready to now move on from Chudayal, Dayans and Betals? So I think uh, maybe, you know, since Siddharth has put in uh, all that research and effort in writing about zombies, I would like to know about it first from Siddharth. Uh, thank you very much, first of all, LP, and thank you uh, to Neil Sir and Sarbajit for having me here on this joint venture of Scarecorn and uh, Fright Venture. So, uh, this let me tell you my perspective. Now, I was brought up watching uh, Ramsey Brothers films, right, uh, in the late 80s and 90s, and then I evolved from watching Bollywood films to a lot of Hollywood films and all the franchise, the conjurings and all these things, zombie things. So, uh, my initial love, if you always ask, will be the same Ramsey Brother kind of materials, the same entities that you just mentioned, that is Chudels, Dians, and Bethals. But yes, uh, since the advent of, let's say, if you talk about the screen, if, since the advent of, and now the global accessibility of uh, American, Spanish, Korean, Chinese horror on uh, amazing platforms like Netflix and Prime. So obviously the Indian viewer or the Indian consumer of horror, not only just a reader, is has all the accessibility to any kind of a horror. And definitely, uh, with the uh, uh, launch of, of a couple of shows, let's say if you're uh, specifically talking about the zombies, which I have written uh, recently. So recently there was a show called uh, uh, Betal on Netflix, which is directed by Patrick Graham, who's also one of the panelists. So it was widely recepted. And uh, I think the Indian reader is just not restricted to a particular kind of a desi uh, horror entities, but he's exposed. 
and see the thing is that about uh, the type of content that we give it doesn't matter whether the uh, kind of horror that we expose our reader is indian or western it's how we present it it works and i think neil sir is a example of it because he writes not only about uh, yakshinis and pishaj he also write about psychological horrors like maya's new husband like what the eyes don't see so and his readers love all of his books so uh, i think it's a it's a way we present uh, to the reader the type of horror so it doesn't matter it's a indian or a western definitely the content is going to work and does, and just not the you know the nationality of these entities right perfect thanks to that so what you're saying is that you know as long as we are able to customize it to an indian audience or an indian reader in terms of the language and the setting and everything the acceptability will will be there for all these entities right perfect neil what about you what's your take here uh, so uh, l you started by asking whether the indian reader is ready i would say definitely spot on because wherever i go on any panel or wherever i have interactions with readers i always get this sense that chudels dians and pishachas are phasing out because i feel that even horror has a kind of a uh, phase and you have rightly put that phases you have actually in fact uh, timelined them in your question itself so the phases of horror keep on changing so we had this phase in the 80s and 90s where we were so influenced by supernatural horror and that was what was working but now if you see a lot of us authors also are writing different kinds of horror even in india maybe people don't know about it but it is surely happening uh, siddharth has been kind enough to name me but there is siddharth himself who has done that as we know vinita has done that tanushri has done that with spooky tales i have spooky stories i'm sorry there is kiran who is doing that so much you know kiran mandral she is going to be on the panel tomorrow and her books are all psychological horror there is ajinkya bhasme who has done that a lot so there were so many of us who are writing books which have nothing to do with the traditional tropes of i would say tropes you know don't mind me saying tropes but chudels and dians and all because i think though very fascinating and though we still love to read about them once in a while there is still a very big readership for that kind of horror also but there is also a kind of reader today in india who wants to read uh, the horror that comes more see it's wrong to say that it comes from the west you know that is what uh, we try tend to think of it who is who are we to define that this horror of psychological uh, the horror that has a psychological bent to it has come from the west who are we to say that it did not exist in india probably it was already here it was here but we did not tap into it and now that we are tapping into it we are also claiming it so we are doing it we are doing a beautiful job with various kinds of horror genres and uh, there is digital horror happening we started with kartik calling kartik you know the movie that came out <laughs> we did that we had digital horror we had a uh, horror of you know um, the mental illness kind because that is also a horror thing that was not in india but ram gopal verma did it with corn and uh, then it followed up with a few films it's happening in books so i see horror going everywhere and that is because our reader is so very accepting now to all different kinds of horror it's a beautiful time to be a horror writer in india right now i just completely just wanted to add a, yeah just wanted to add a very small note just like neil sir mentioned that these things are not essentially western they have existed in india uh, if uh, you remember and if you have seen i mean most of you might have seen the ram se brothers first ever film doga zameen ki niche i think that was based on a zombie concept way back in 1970s because they specifically mention about the zombies they mention about the zombie tribe and that was in 1970s and it took us 30 40 years to make a go go gone and then betal that's it I agree. In fact, uh, I, I think everybody here would have read the story "Monkey's Paw," right? Uh, and that was one of the first, uh, uh, at least one of the first stories around zombies that I had read. And I was too young to even know what a zombie is. Yeah. I did not realize that the story was about a zombie. It's so only now paw, that I realize it. The monkey's paw to midnight mass. We have come a long way. Really? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, uh, a quick fun fact: we dramatized in school the monkey's paw, and I played the boy's mother, Alice. 
yakshas our pisaches our vetals are rooted to an indian ethos and what we have not managed to do as authors which we are starting to do now is reinvent those entities in a modern manner you know your ramses etc is very dated now writers are starting to reinvent them and make them exciting for the indian viewer but i do believe that there are deeply rooted um, elements to them that appeal to an indian mindset the way that a western myth might not so i don't think we're done with uh, uh, the entities that are unique to india in fact i think we're at the start of a very exciting time because if we approach these with better writing skills with a more updated sophisticated way of writing we can use them past the boo horror that they've been used for and use them to explore some really deep uh, resonating uh, ideas that will resonate especially with indian authors So I don't think we're done with them at all. I think that we as writers need to write to the rise to the challenge of using them in different ways in these times. Yes. I, I don't think I don't know. I'm way. ready to let go. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I'm ready to let go of witches and chilies and dyads for sure. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Thank you so much, Vanita. Uh, Tanisha, anything that you'd like to add to this? yeah i think you know uh, i agree with the partly with what vinita says and partly with what neel says because uh, basically we have all grown up as children listening to these stories they exist in the fables and myths and all the stories that we heard right from childhood narrated by our grandmothers and grandfathers and i think somewhere uh, we have the seed germinating in the mind that there exist some uh, you know such entities so when we grow up we don't let go of them so easily but yes like vanita said we have to reinvent those and put them in a new form and uh, here i would like to slip in one word uh, a little bit uh, to siddhar i think uh, my grandson would be very happy to know there is a book on zombies coming out <laughs> he calls them zombies and he's just 4 years old and uh, my inspiration to write the horror book actually came from him because he's always talking about zombies and monsters and all those i don't know where he got those ideas from because he was too young when he started this he was just 3 not even going to school but obviously somewhere he has been watching cartoons or wherever he has seen something that kind so i think those traditional tropes will remain but what we are doing is we are reinventing them putting them in a new package like in the marketing they say fresh new and better packaged and you know the best kind of self or nirma or whatever it's something like that yes that will remain that will continue to fascinate readers at the same time we are ready to go beyond that and explore you know the parapsychology and the mental health and all those you know areas also which are fairly new to our uh, country in a sense that not much was written or if it was written it wasn't given that much publicity or marketing so i think both can exist and there will always be readers for both kinds excellent thank you tanushree so before i move on to hari um, it reminds me of the series that i recently watched brand new cherry flavor which was written i think in the 1970s and 1990s based on brazilian mythology and it is now coming to fore you know uh, people like me sitting in india are now coming to know about that mythos right so so i guess it's 
I agree with Zanid. I guess it's time that you know we take our, instead of shying away from our brilliant flaws, we take them and bring them to the world. Let the world know about our shreds and dyes and details, right? Um, Hari, are you there? Uh, would you like yeah, to I'm here. I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. So I actually agree with Vinita, and uh, somewhere I, I agree with uh, Tanishri as well. See, for me. As a kid, I used to hear these stories from my grandmother, okay, about yakshis and uh, mohinis and bays and all those things, and uh, that used to fascinate me, okay. And then there were these Scooby Doo cartoons that again used to fascinate me. I think that's where my entire um, uh, fascination for horror came from. And as for movies, na, like see, old wine always tastes better, and even if it's in a new bottle, it will always taste best. Okay, and you look at a. There was this movie called Bull Bull that came out, I think, two years ago on Netflix. It it is based on a a, a very simple uh, supernatural entity that is from the eastern part of part of the country, and the way they have repackaged it mm-hmm. and made it more rational, I think that is what will attract more audience towards horror. And when you're talking about this bhoot, preet, pishach, we have to understand that right now we are only talking about Indian English horror. So not talking about Hindi or the regional because all these booth plays today. These these books are more. My books, none of them are about booth plays or churels. Uh, Neil even Neil's Yakshini is a different take on on the supernatural entity. So the audience that we're catering to. I think it prefers that uh, old wine in a new bottle or a completely new wine, which is based on the, uh, you know, uh, imported bottle or whatever you want to call it. Right. So we so have to understand. Those are some very quotable that. quotes, Hari. I old hope wine so, yeah. in you. I'm really sorry. You know, I can turn on the video. I don't know how. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing. Here. It's an empty house. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I want to add. Yeah. All right. Great. I think great. the point that also needs to be made is about authenticity. You know, if you are going to make an impact, you need to have authenticity as a writer, and authenticity comes from our roots. So really, you know, zombies, etc., are great. I mean, as writers, we love playing with all kinds of forms. But I think to reinvent what comes out of our deepest fears and our country and our Indian roots is really the challenge. And just it as is, I said, yeah. you know, just to. Uh, you know add something to what i said so our old roots as we say or the demons that we have or the monsters that we have our supernatural lore is not going anywhere it is just going to be there so in fact of all of us vinita is the one who put it the best by saying that we have to reinvent those things for the newer audience because the audience tastes will change and they are changing so that is what is happening and uh, probably that is what we have done with all our books and in fact two of you here pointed it out that i have done it in yakshini as well so you know that is what we have done that is where it probably struck a chord with the people who are reading it now so yeah we are not going away anywhere from the old horror but we need to have a new and we are, Im- we are i'm sorry I, I, i'm just adding something here we are importing uh, um, foreign elements as well like there's a movie coming about about a book which is a jewish entity supernatural entity which is based on a malayalam film and uh, you know my next book is again based on a super supernatural entity but it's not based on your desi you know hindu or whatever you want to call it desi entity but it's there so yeah we are all trying so that settled great all right so i'll move on to the next question which i had asked earlier um you know as your next read what are some of the inventive narratives that you would like to read in the horror genre anyone can go ahead with it oh from authors or coming from authors all over the world from indian authors from indian authors i would like to read a lot more psychological horror because i feel that is an area that really needs to be tapped into and we are very good at uh, talking about uh, you know things like loneliness depression stuff like that you know very hard hitting horror but that the horror that stems from the human mind not the horror that comes from external factors so we don't see much of that happening here you know like the movie sixth sense which has such an impact globally if you 
look at sixth sense in a in an analytical way you will see that the horror of that movie comes from the mind of the protagonist uh, and there were so many other examples very fine and beautiful examples where that's happened but in india i am hard pressed to think of an example for this you know where uh, the horror is not coming from say an external agency like a haunted house or a ghost or a spirit or maybe a supernatural entity but it is coming from the mind of that person because you know the mind can is the most evil place there is the human mind that is there uh, and that horror can supersede any other horror that can surround us so that's what i'd like to see more of So you have to wait till December then. Nah, even my book is uh, you know along the same lines, but then you know we'll read each other's work, Harry. So yeah, and there's another book. I think I wanted to add this in the previous in the first question. So uh, so there is this book called The Wounds of the Dead. It's by uh, uh, Vikram Paralkar. Mm-hmm. So it's a nice. Uh, it has a zombie kind of a setting in a small Maharashtrian village. Although he has never mentioned anywhere that these are zombies or anything, but it's a very interesting book. There is humor, and the writer is a doctor, so you know there's a. Uh, it's an interesting book. I think all of you, if you have not read it, you should pick it up and. Uh, I it. should name. I should name Narayan Dharap at this point, the Marathi author. Uh, Most of his horror is very very psychological. So Narayan right. Dharap has done that. Among Indian English authors, to clarify, this is not happening yeah. yet. So that is right. where I like to see more of that kind of literature. You know what I'd really like to see, out of all the Indian English horror writing that you read, about nine tenth of it is really very old fashioned. It still has this huge colonial hangover. Yeah. It's about haunted houses. Yeah, I'm so tired of it. So few of our Indian writers are actually writing at the cutting edge of horror. You know, are actually using fresh kind of eyes to see see it with. I really like a lot more Indian authors to stop doing this Ruskin Bond, Victorian haunted house kind of number and start you know freshening up the act because your audience is now being exposed to global writing. Whatever your subject might be, you need to bring to it skills that refresh it, that make it far more exciting, that look forward with. Twenty-first century eyes, not backwards, with kind of you know very Victorian gaze. I'll completely echo Venita's sentiment here because a lot of the books that I pick up to read uh, nowadays of the Indian English authors, I find that they go in that same territory. They take us backwards. You know the the time when we read about those colonial houses, the British era setting, and uh, you know the mist, the Havelis. Even I'm writing a Haveli book, but that's a different thing. So you know, instead of going back, I think we should go forward with horror. uh i think indian authors need to be more experimentative with their writing they should take risks and they should try to find and explore things that frighten people rather than the things that they are already established are horror so you know new kinds of horror should be taken out like how the west has done that so many times they find horror in clowns and toys and sand and water and everything you know even japanese horror does that they will find horror in even a pair of spectacles so that kind of horror in india is sorely lacking the horror of that comes from innocuous object i tapped into it in right behind you where i made a pair of chappal scary and i am doing that in some other things but i don't want to talk about myself i want to see this happening a lot more uh, around us so that is what has to happen so when what happens is horror in india has become stereotypical it has to move away from that it has to become different But I will add that when we move uh, away from our stereotypical uh, tropes, unfortunately, what people are doing is then adopting the stereotypical tropes of the West. So suddenly, you have zim- zombies imported in, into India without them being reinvented to an Indian setting. So yes. you know that's important. Authenticity is important. Without losing. I agree. Up. I have a slightly unpopular opinion here. I love period horror. Absolutely love historical horror, period horror, where there are no cell phones, there is no Wi-Fi, there is no connectivity. You're stuck. You're stuck. That's it. You know, there's a storm coming and you can't escape it, and you have to deal with it, right? So, so, so that that kind of horror is something that I love. However, you know, um, in in some recent books, which are period books, for example, Silent Companions like Laura Percel. uh even mexican gothic by silvia morena garcia uh they've taken 
the gothic setting in a period horror and given it a different twist you do not have your regular ghosts absolutely over there so that is something which i really enjoyed and el the uh, writers of the hive themselves have really mm. done a lot of very good horror which is uh, you know to quote a cliche thinking out of the box so that kind of horror which is not stereotypical i i see that coming out of the hive so kudos to you on that thank you so much thank you so much uh tanishree what about you what's your take here what kind of horror would you like to read next from indian authors i think uh, what i call it, that is cerebral uh, uh, you know horror uh, it's got not so much of tropes as neil said no props but it's more to do with the mind and i would love to see people step into that you know mind zone and experiment with that area of course i am ill uh, equipped to do that i i have in my in this panel a whole lot of heavy weights in horror i am a new entrant so for me i am still testing the grounds and my book is for young adults of course it's being enjoyed by the adults too but uh, i'm still at the nascent stage so i think one of them would soon come out with something which i would love to you know read you're being very modest i have uh, just finished reading spooky tales and it's not just spooky it actually takes you around the world which was one of the things that i genuinely genuinely enjoyed and it is you know it's a testimonial to tanushree's introduction that she is uh, a huge she has a huge travel bug the way she describes places it's just you know absolutely mind blowing thank you yeah So that what about you? Yeah, so I just also uh, wanted to add that, like Tanushri ji uh, mentioned, that not only children, uh, adults are also liking the book. So I am in one of those adults. Uh, so spooky little definitely, and as you uh, rightly mentioned, that it takes us around the world, right from the pyramids to the forests, and so that is it. And talking about your specific Thank question, you so much, Nirwan. Thank you, Siddharth. Thank you, ma'am. And. Uh, uh, coming to a specific question like just like you mentioned that what are the most inventive things that we you know uh, want from our indian authors i think i always think i always also mentioned this in one of the uh, other programs that i wanted to see something like uh, a horror happening in the setting of our great indian epics like uh, the ramayana and the mahabharat so what if lord ram is there in the in this uh, kutia with uh, sita ji and uh, uh, lakshman and uh, you know there is a infiltration of the forest by the zombies or maybe there is some witch uh, you know and in ramayana and mahabharat we all, all, already have these rakshasas and chudels and so many demons so i think the real horror uh, stories our stories actually date back to the epics and not just in the in the modern times so and horror, also the horror of writing such uh, a thing horror in mythology would be apart from the horror in the book itself it will be a horror that will come from outside outside yes we hear that true so, so that, that's a great idea man it's fantastic to yeah. horror in mythology and you know i also because i come from the land of rajasthan and rajasthan is uh, you know full of about palaces and all these uh, so i was just thinking and you know, i was just planning one day so what if prithviraj chauhan or maharana pratap had to fight a entire army of chudels or army of zombies or in the in the uh, uh, palace of uh, savai raja savai man singh what if there is some danger lurking some supernatural entity fortunately neil sir is i think working upon uh, this uh, book uh, the curse of the maharani something like that right so i want to i want horror in our epics uh, in our mythology books in our historical because anyway see our mythology whether it's ramayana or it's mahabharata everybody is twisting according to his own pleasure okay so we see so many versions of it and you know everything is coming into it why not horror then in in our mythology that's my take in fact uh, siddharth if you recall uh, sorry uh, i was just reminded of vikram or betal which actually yeah. to a certain extent is a very epic kind of a thing and yet it has the history and so many stories told so interestingly and i think it's quite riveting yeah my I mother used to read right now i'm working on a version of vikram and vetal i'm right now the book that i'm just finishing is a rework of vikram and vetal so yay <laughs> <laughs> i'm i miss chanda mama a lot yeah because that's yes, where i used to read those <laughs> 
excellent. So Benita is here for the rescue now. Yeah. So all those who Vic- miss Vikram and Vital right. are reinvented. <laughs> all right. Great, great. So, uh, it, you know, this is something that we already spoke about, but I, I would like to touch upon it again, right? We spoke about bringing the old and reinventing it in a modern setup. Right. So what are some of, uh, you know, what some of the due diligence you would do or some research you would do to be able to make it happen? You know, for example, just uh, uh, I, I just finished reading this book called Hex by a Dutch author, Thomas Old Hewitt. Now, what he's done is he's taken a curse on a town in the 1600s. I'm shown present day setting with your Wi-Fi, your internet and the works and everything. And the town within a world that has its rules has its own different rules altogether because they have to manage with the curse. They are living with the curse. And, you know, it it just shows that how you learn to live with certain things, right? Uh, So so that is a very interesting uh, read for me. Then um, Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, where uh, there is an IKEA-like store which is demonically possessed, right? So we, we've seen havelis and mansions and everything demonically possessed, but what about uh, co-working spaces that are haunted, right? Or spaceships. So how do you bring about the old and set it with the new? Hari, would you like to start? Yeah. Okay, I think he's busy. Neil, go ahead. Okay, let me talk about it because I've done that in three books. I did that in my first book that was Maya's new husband where we had a ghouris in modern day setting. Uh, I did that with Yakshini where we have Yakshini in a modern day setting and also I did that with Pishaj the same thing. So uh, for me uh, when I started writing horror it was uh, the zone that I was in was mostly taking a contemporary uh, story but uh, imbibing into it some lore or legend from the old times or from mythology. So what I typically do when it comes to reinventing stuff, when it comes to the research part of it, uh, I tackle it differently depending on how the book is. Now, when I was writing Maya's New Husband and I had to insert agoris into the story, the story is quite modern, but then there had to be these agoris who are close it uh, in the sense that uh, they are agoris at night and in the daytime they are like people like you and I. So uh, to do that, I had to, uh, I met a lot of people who also had experiences with Agoris. I did not meet Agoris themselves. I will admit that. I did not do that. But I met a lot of people who had met Agoris and I found from them what was their style of living. And I had heard such scary things about them, about the cult. I just wanted to cross check with them whether that was real, whether they really did that stuff. Yes, when I found out, when I found out that even cannibalism is something that happens, uh, then I found myself bolder to include that element in the book as well. So this is what I did. With Yakshini, it was more difficult because the thing is, the Yakshini lore is different in North India and South India. It's completely different. In fact, it is diametrically opposite. So while Yakshinis still have their demigoddess nature in both places, in the South, they are considered to be more scary. They are considered to be unpredictable and they are given almost a witch-like presence. So I had to strike a balance there. So what I did was I found out that the Hindu mythology has 36 Yakshinis in the court of Kuber. So I made a 37th one. So my Yakshini is the fictional one. She is not there. So if any religious brigade comes after me with, you know, whatever pitchforks, I have a way out that even in Aghuri, I had a way out because my protagonist, or I should say my antagonist, Bhaskar Sadachari, who is the Aghuri cannibal and the uh, main villain of the story, I uh, found my way out by saying that he is not a real Aghori, but he is somebody who thinks he's an Aghori. So I have my way out again if you come to me. So this is the kind of thing I do. I keep myself clear from controversies, or I should say potential controversies, because when you touch something which is so deeply ingrained in mythology, in lore, and also in the belief system of people, you have to be very careful, especially because you are writing a piece of horror and Siddharth was very brave to mention some really controversial topics uh, in the previous response but I'm sure that uh, no author would like would 
you know be brave enough to write it uh, without a lot of protection so <laughs> that is the kind of work that i put behind the scenes that it's time to move out of the country and then write your book <laughs> don't go as far as that because my readers are here and i love my readers so i'm <laughs> attached to them you know when you use the word due diligence uh and i think the due diligence is not just about the research that you do it's also about your intent as a writer why are you writing horror are you writing it using it voyeuristically as a boo scare to terrify your readers i don't think that's enough i think as a reader your as a writer your intent has to go past that uh which is why you know when i did dark tales it uh i took the scary stuff but i also try to tackle social issues through it because to me i think it's very superficial to use things just to scare people uh, uh to, to my mind that's not a very honest uh, thing to do as a writer you have to do a little thing a little bit more and i find that the stories that stay with you the scary stories that stay with you ask the larger questions you know, like frankenstein asked the question of does man have the right to play god and i think to some degree you have to do due diligence about your intent are you just trying to scare people to make a little bit of money or are you actually asking some deeper questions are you questioning some social mores that are wrong are you doing something a little bit beyond the obvious boo scare to me for me when i do due diligence that's what i look at that am i managing to do something a little bit more because if i was not able to do that i don't think i'd write horror i i would think it was uh, not very moral to do it uh, right. i would like to uh, yeah. bring in something here sorry uh, see uh, when i started spooky stories i actually at that moment did not think of having a horror book i started with the migrant labor issue which was in news and it was very disturbing you know the kind of news that was coming in and my first story of the book which i wrote was this lady in red where it deals with the migrant issue so i agree with it uh, with your view point that if we are able to bring some social issues and also when i came to you know learn that it was targeted for younger uh, impressionable people the young adults i thought you know a little bit of information here or there uh, put in sneakily uh, which would you know ha have some impact would be of a great use so i have these little bits of information and nuggets which i think would remain in the minds about the places or wherever uh, the culture or whatever so i think it is important because we are also uh, socially res uh, socially responsible for what we write and yes i agree with you there that we should be aware of that in fact i think even in yakshini neel has tackled a lot of social i i would say in uh, you know uh, in all the books uh, that you've written neel you have um, in at least the ones that i have read and i've read more than 50% of your books you he's tackled a lot of issues which have got to do with women and their place in the society even when we say it is 21st century right so so i think you know that that's something which all of us as writers of horror are quite conscious about is to bring in more than just the jump scares and for me you know, no, there has to be value a, it is not a conscious effort i don't make it a point on the you know outline or something like that that i need to have feminism as a part of this book it invariably happens so when i look back i see that being a very strong point of maya's new husband as well as yakshini and also a story like peshach where even the female protagonist there is a very strong voice but this was not a plan this was not a plan i think uh, someone had told me before i forget the name an established author of course some interview that i read that uh, it is the author's thoughts that the people buy and not their stories so i suppose it is our thoughts it is our uh, philosophy that should permeate through our books to the readers at large so even though uh, we don't make a conscious effort to do that at times there are so many questions that a good book raises even yes. without the author's knowledge that this will raise a raise a point because sometimes what happens is it is the author's philosophy is so natural to him or her that they just write that piece 
but when it goes out it evokes a feeling in the reader that this is the kind of thing so i think that is where it happened because yakshini's story it just came to me and i did not have any uh, you know plan to take it this way or that way it just happened the way it happened and you know neil i completely agree with you but i will also say that horror by itself is a genre that lends itself to social questioning yes. you know because a horror is about social norms breaking down it is about the uncanny disrupting normal life and therefore it's a it is a by itself it's a genre that lends itself very well to questioning the normal because the abnormal breaks through so i always say that horror does not require it does not just require a very intelligent mind to write it but it also requires a very intelligent mind to read it so horror is not a genre for everyone for this particular reason so a lot of people who say that we don't read horror they give me the reason that we are scared of horror but the real fact is maybe their minds are not creative enough to understand horror and the underlying questions that are there in it probably they look at horror only as a set of jump scares which is why films work which is why horror films work so well because there the thinking is done by the director and the reader or the audience there is just taking the output of it but in horror reading the reader has to put an input as well they ha- horror is essentially fantasy it is a dark fantasy so what speculative fiction so what the reader has to do is to also let his or her mind wander and think about what is happening in the book which is not easy for everyone and that is why horror has limited le- readership but i like the way it is because we have dedicated readers perfect thanks siddhartha what do you what's your take on this question okay so first of all like a disoriented student i'll just apologize because at the time the question was asked i got a call from the hospital so <laughs> i had missed out the question can you please kindly repeat it uh, yeah so as a as a back bencher student i might uh, ask this again <laughs> that's fine but i am not going to act like a teacher right now <laughs> i'll be nice and i'll just repeat the question So the question is that uh, you know we are talking about taking the old you know your your lore and everything and bringing it into a new setting as an author of horror what is some of the due diligence research some of the things that you're conscious about when trying to bring in lore into uh, you know the modern setting okay so uh, i'll just uh, uh, mention two quick notes uh, so in one of the interview i was asked that how uh, you know you were able to write on such a difficult uh, subject like zombies and uh, my answer was that it was the easiest thing to do i happened to come across a post by uh, neil sir a couple of days ago that it took him one month to write my asno husband but actually he has taken 30 years to write it because he had this thing in mind so similarly i did not do even a uh, i did not even wasted one second on the zombies uh, because i have been watching zombie films for the past 30 years i am also a great fan of zombies just like tanushi ma'am sir grandson so since birth i think i have been watching it and uh, so there are a lot of things about zombies you know zombies also are different types they have different behaviors they are different walk differently they talk differently some of them are cannibals some of them are not so all these things i had uh, it was ingrained into uh, you know my head for the past 30 years uh, so generally for horror it's a, it's very easy to write because of the past 30 years of watching films and now reading books uh, uh, one of the things second thing i w- wanted to mention is that in one of the recent books what i Took was a very bold thing in research, and uh, it so happened in that in one of the thing it is based upon a forensic doctor. The forensic doctor, you know, his his one of his uh, duties is to do post mortem. And uh, even though I was a I'm a med- medical student, but uh, and even though we had uh, forensic department postings, mortuary postings in second year, but I was very afraid to go inside the mortuary because the entire atmosphere of a mortuary, the smell, it's so uh, not only scary, it, it's so you know repulsive. that a normal man cannot even enter inside a mort- mortuary and so i did not have any clue how a post mortem is done but for this particular thing i contacted uh, one of my forensic colleagues and i not only i went to the mortuary and uh, saw it i also assisted <laughs> into the post mortem also put my hands on the cadaver inside the cadaver because i didn't know wanted that someone if he's reading a book whenever it comes out any forensic guy to you know say that are you are a doctor and being a doctor you are just mentioning uh not uh, the correct thing so that was the boldest thing which i had done apart from that i think uh, generally research is something you know uh, i just do not do because maybe i have done already done 30 years of passive research so that's something my take on research 
absolutely like, agree. That? I think you just scared also... me to death. I'm never going to do research like that. Okay, you're not going to get me <laughs> the poetry. That was really scary. Ooh. <laughs> no. Medical medical people are always, you know, so much many weird, already so weird and psychotic people, and it's so normal for us. I'll just mention a very quick note also. If you if you think that was scary, so in our first year when we have dissections, you know, anatomy dissections, and in the last year we have to uh, go to the viva and we have to answer about. So we have all these cut hands and upper limbs and lower limbs and heads in a separate sections. So what we did is that to practice for it because generally they are not allowed us to, uh, you know, uh, to take. We can we cannot take it to hostel. So we actually sto stole the upper limbs and took it to our rooms. and kept it in formal in baskets <laughs> so we are already very crazy and uh, you know weird kind of uh, people i agree my cousin sister is doing her medical and to get over her fear of cadavers she sleeps with a hand just a hand you know that's her way of trying to get over the fear so yes i i agree with you there <laughs> okay great thank you sadat uh, hari over to you Hari, are you there? All right. So while we wait for Hari, so, I will. Oh, you're back. Great. I I have missed the question again. I think I was out a couple of times. All right. Yeah. So Hari, the question is that um, you know we're talking about bringing in the lower, the old, into a new context or a new setting. As an author of horror, what is the due diligence that you do? uh you know to be able to write that fiction and now uh, if anybody asks me this question in my sleep i can say it again because i have repeated it thrice okay 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 so uh see bringing that old into new is something that uh, it, it, see i don't do that I, i'm not someone who brings old into the new or anything like that i am going with my stories my stories are set in the present there's nothing going back there's no old legends coming back so i would not be the right person to answer that all right all right so i'm But sorry i made you were... i made i'm sorry i made you <laughs> repeat that question <laughs> no that's fine i enjoyed repeating it okay yeah. so moving on to the next question um and uh, i think i will start this question with hari since we we have him here already uh we're talking about true tales of horror right and considering that uh, neel has uh, you know has worked with sarbajit and come up with spirit talk to me and uh, hari has written india's most haunted right uh, and also across the globe not just in india but across the globe true stories of horror or true accounts of horror are the most consumed content why do you think that is so because they all make for good campfire stories you know everybody wants to see the thing thing about horror is everybody wants to hear or read or watch horror stories okay even as a kid when i was a kid i was scared of ghosts and all those things but i wanted to watch those films you know us time dd one pe they used to have this every friday night they used to have this movies like gumnam and all those things and i wanted to watch them but i didn't have the guts because i was like 6 or 5 or something like that i couldn't watch it alone and my mother wouldn't let me watch it okay so coming to this true stories what well, i think see the stories that your grandmothers tell you they claim those are true stories right folklore that happened in the past you know that's been passed on from one generation to another they all claim is true stories and somehow when we uh, we everyone has this fascination for the unknown you know and this this is somewhere rooted in that uh, question what happens after death because the major horror that we are talking about now i'm not talking about psychological horror only i'm talking about horror as a genre it has it's rooted in death and the question that looms around what happens after death everybody wants to know that nobody has the answer no matter if you're a, if you're an atheist or if you're a believer of xyz religion or sect nobody has the answer even if you're a scientist you don't have an answer anyway so when when you're talking about ghosts like india's most haunted it's based on rumors you know it's based on all these uh, rumors of haunting Haunted places, fifty places. Anger. The story about the about the Dibu in in my hometown in Kerala. You know the Jew. It's a Jewish myth which is there in that in in that story. 
So all these stories, it's, it has stayed. And, and the fascination to know about what happens after death somehow, somehow makes, I think that is what makes me uh, interested in that particular topic. I would like to know what happens. I would like to speculate about it. That's what makes it speculative fiction. Excellent. Thanks, Hari. So, um, Neil, over to you. Okay, so, let me answer this question anecdotally. And uh, the anecdote that I'll provide is my own experience. So, when I started writing horror, you know, I started writing it more for a kind of entertainment, a kind of fun, catering to the people who are already fans of horror, right? So, my books were Maya's new husband, Pishaj, Yakshini, that kind of horror I was writing. And then what happened is, or before that, when I was writing that kind of horror, I did not really know whether I believed in ghosts and spirits or not. I was just taking a supernatural lore, putting it in a new setting and, you know, making up my stories. So that was what was happening. And then in 2018, when I got in touch with paranormal investigators, Jaya Lani first, you know, for Haunted, and then Sarbajit Mohanty for uh, the spirits talk to me. So when that happened, and I started writing those books, researching for them, I started having these long discussions with both Jai and Sarbajit, who are both amazing paranormal investigators, by the way, and both have very, very different views of the paranormal. So it was fun knowing from both of them. And when we went into those, you know, the very baser and finer points of what the paranormal is, how they went into these haunted places and they had these weird, crazy experiences which no science can explain. When I heard those, you know, then I got the real goosebumps. That was the time I would say I graduated as a horror author because Jai even took me to some of these places. I was to go with Jai also, but because of the lockdown, it didn't happen. But when I went to those horror places and I, when I saw things happening in front of my uh, postgraduate science eyes, which, you know, were completely still that time, they wanted proof and empirical formulas for everything. When I saw things happen, which cannot be explained, that was the time I believed that, okay, there might be another side that we don't know about. And that was when the fear actually seeped into my nerves. And then the books that came out were Spirits Talk to Me and Haunted. And what is horror all about? Horror is all about being relatable. So the moment you write a story, which the person reading it feels that, oh, this can really happen, or this might have happened, or I could be the one in this place. Why are stories of Kuldhara, Bhangad, Mayong, Lambidehar Mines, the Three Kings Chapel in Goa, why are these so scary? They are so scary because these are places around us. And it is like people believe that, okay, this place, I know, Arif Baba, this is in Rajasthan, I've been to Rajasthan. And it is so close to me. And in this place, this kind of thing is happening. That relatability is what pulls the rug from under your feet. And you feel that there is no comparison for it. Whereas when you are reading a story like Maya's new husband, I'm giving my own example because I do not want to uh, take, you know, speak bad about any other book. While it is a well-written horror book, at the same time, it's a fiction. The book is fiction. So there is a kind of detachment already when you say it is fiction. People already know that this is a story that the author has made up. It has not really happened. So when that happens, it's already a kind of disconnect. But with stories that I have written and also Tanushri has written spooky tales. So those are also uh, rooted in reality. And when that happens, of course, the stories are uh, you know, scary as anything. And that is why it works in the West so much. The Amityville horror or the story of, uh, I don't know, so, so many, I cannot even think of them right now. Uh, so these stories work the best conjuring, the conjuring series, because they were entirely based on the Warren uh, couple, you know, what they did as paranormal investigators. So these stories strike a chord because we know that people actually did it. And that is the reason why Jack the Ripper is scary to me even to this day. I, you give me the hundredth version of a Jack, to, Jack the Ripper book and I will still, still be scared of it. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. So um, I would love to keep this discussion ongoing because to be honest, uh, I wouldn't want to spend my Saturday evening any other way. This is so exhilarating. 
but we are one minute over the mark. So, um, you know, uh, just to close, uh, Neil, you said that you wanted a minute to close the discussion. So over to you, and then we can all say our goodbyes until we meet next time. So I would like to first and foremost thank everybody who was there on the panel today. Uh, Siddharth, Vinita. Vinita, nice meeting you for the first time, by the way, and amazing to hear from you. We should chat more often. We'll do we that. Should. We should. Ari, Ari always amazing. Uh, L. So you people have taken time out from your busy schedule, and I know that the holidays are coming up, so you have taken time out out on a weekend. Thank you very much for that. I would also like to thank the people of the Hindi panel, the Hindi horror panel that was the first that ever happened in India, as far as my knowledge goes. And we had some wonderful authors there sharing their thoughts. And this also idea was, uh, it came from Nikhil Ukreti, who is a member of the Horror Writers Association India, that we should talk more about regional horror. And so immediately we set up a Hindi horror panel and we did it. So I'm very happy that that also happened very well. Uh, plus, my uh, full vote of thanks will happen tomorrow at the physical event in Andheri, Mumbai. We are we have uh, some amazing panels tomorrow as well. And Fright Venture itself is presenting one panel tomorrow. So that will be a physical panel in Andheri. And we have Kiran Mandral, uh, Ajinkya Basme, Faraz Kazi, and myself on the panel. And uh, it, we will be moderated by Savio. See you there tomorrow. Those, who, those of you can make it to Andheri, Mumbai. And uh, have a jolly good time. Thank you. I'm booking my ticket. Thank right you now. so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank everyone. you so Thank much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you, everyone. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Bye. Halloween. Happy Halloween. Halloween. Happy Halloween. Bye. All right, this was, uh, uh, yeah, I think, uh, one of the most uh, amazing panels that we had for... Uh...